so are counties, so is the state. So we're all having a burden right now. And before I would look for another source of tax revenue for municipalities, uh, which would encroach upon the ability of other forms of government to finance what they do, I would want to make sure that municipalities are taking advantage of all of the resources that are available to them now. They have not only sales tax revenues, they also have uh, municipal uh, water and sewer charges, franchise fees, uh, EMS fees, municipal power fees on occasion, court fees and fines. Some cities have tax increment financing, not every city, but some do. Uh, some have hotel motel tax, and now there's a new uh, quality events bonus uh, that the state has passed and made available to cities. So I'd want to make sure they were availing themselves of all of the resources that are currently available before I gave them a piece of the sales of income tax or property tax uh, or some other source. I think it's awfully important, and it's been mentioned already, and I will mention it again, that the state not impose uh, unfunded mandates on cities. We get very upset when the federal government does that to us. We should not be doing that as a state government to either counties or to municipalities. We also need to be very careful about the state passing tax exemptions that have an impact on the collection of city sales tax. In 1980, just 30 years ago, we had six exemptions to the sales tax. It included food and groceries, it included agricultural equipment and supplies, it included newspapers and several other things. Today, we have 143. So over 30 years, we greatly increased the number of sales tax exemptions, and every one of those impacts not only on city sales tax, on state sales tax collections, they also impact on the cities. I would certainly want uh, the active efforts of the state.